Hello and welcome to the Renan and Jutensen and Adosterone System. My name is David Woodruff. I am the editor of Critical Care Nursing Made Incredibly Easy. I hope to make this incredibly easy for you too. So let's talk a little bit about this renin angiotensin aldosterone system. What exactly does it do? Well, it controls blood pressure. And it does so in a couple different ways. By maintaining fluid balance and by maintaining our vasculature. The kidneys will sense a drop in blood pressure or a drop in fluid volume, and then the vessels will cause the release of renin. So in other words, the kidneys sense this and the kidneys say, whoa, blood pressure's low, we need to get that blood pressure up. It releases renin and then renin, in fact, is going to increase blood pressure. We'll see that in just a moment. So factors that are related to stimulating the secretion of renin include poor circulation in the kidneys. So for whatever reason, we're having this decreased blood pressure. Now that could be as a result of having renal artery stenosis, could be as a result of shock, but whatever the case may be, we have decrease in our blood pressure, which is leading to having not enough oxygen to the kidney. Because of this decrease in oxygen or because of the decrease in blood volume, so it doesn't necessarily have to be ischemia, it could also be the decrease in volume, so maybe the patient is dehydrated, etc. We're going to have some uh, different mechanisms that are causing the release of renin. Obviously, in the kidney itself, we're going to have the release of renin. We can also have things like the sympathetic nervous system and our low level of sodium. Those things can also have a direct effect on the release of renin. So again, let's go back to that patient who has a low blood pressure because they are in shock. They have decreased circulating volume of blood. They also have a low blood pressure. So two stimuli that are stimulating the kidney to release renin. At the same time, we have that compensatory mechanism of the sympathetic nervous system that is activated, which is also going to stimulate the kidney to release renin. So we've got all of these stimulations that are going on, and we ought to have some redundancy here, just in case one of these factors uh, isn't, uh, maybe it's an atypical presentation, or maybe uh, the patient is not as as uh, sensitive to that particular thing. So we want to make sure that there's some redundancy in the kidney, and in fact, there certainly is. So let's take a look first at how our kidney is going to be able to control fluid balance. By releasing renin, renin is going to be converted into angiotensin II, which then is going to stimulate the release of ADH. ADH is antidiuretic hormone. Now think about what the word means, antidiuretic. So if the patient has ADH, that means they're not diuresing, they're hanging onto fluid. If the patient lacks ADH, that means they will be diuresing. So it's kind of like a double negative. ADH is also going to stimulate the release of aldosterone. And the combination of ADH and aldosterone will stimulate the reabsorption of water, sodium, and chloride in the kidney and also stimulate thirst. Uh, two strong mechanisms to try to be able to hang on to more fluid. Angiotensin II, so remember renin was converted to angiotensin, and angiotensin II, angiotensin II has a direct action on the vasculature, so it's going to cause vasoconstriction, especially in those arterioles. At the same time, it is also going to stimulate the release of ADH and aldosterone. See some uh, redundancy here in this whole process? And we're going to have increased sympathetic activity. So the idea being that if your blood pressure drops, if you're in shock, if you're maybe severely dehydrated or you have hypovolemic shock, whatever the case may be, what's going to happen is that we have this redundant pathway of being able to hang on to fluid and increase blood pressure so that you're not having decreased perfusion of the organs. Another mechanism comes in to play here as well, and that's called atrial natriuretic peptide. ANP, as the name might imply, is released from the atria of the heart. So as fluid comes back to the heart, if there's a lot of fluid coming back to the heart and it's stretching those atria, then they are going to release atrial natriuretic peptide. 
The idea being that we want to try to have some diureses and get rid of that extra fluid. So the end result will be to lower our blood volume, which in turn will lower our blood pressure. So this is kind of the opposite of what we're getting with a renin-angiotensin system. Now, keep in mind, too, the renin-angiotensin system, we're talking about stimulation of the renin-angiotensin. If we don't stimulate the renin-angiotensin system, then we are going to start getting rid of fluid. We are going to have vasodilation. So this is another component. Now, in, in the stimulation of ANP, that is going to cause the opposite thing to happen by lowering blood pressure and lowering blood volume by causing diuresis. Aldosterone is released by the adrenals and it's going to cause the reabsorption of sodium and excretion of potassium. This will help to regulate water in the body, so very important in this whole process here where the patient is having a low blood pressure, it's important that we have aldosterone to help with water retention, increasing our blood volume and blood pressure. So this diagram here is illustrating what's happening in the renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system, kind of putting all of these things together. So let's start out at the very top here where we have a sodium deficit dehydration. So we're having dehydration that's stimulating renin, renin is stimulating angiotensin, getting converted to angiotensin 1, and angiotensin converting enzyme in the lung is causing it to be converted to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 is the thing that is going to cause all of these effects that are seen in the bottom of the screen. So sodium and chloride reabsorption, vasoconstriction, and an increase in aldosterone production. So these are the things that are really important to being able to raise that blood pressure. Now, let's say that the blood pressure is starting to get too high. We would expect that this process would turn off. Well, in some people, the process doesn't turn off for one reason or another. And so that's why we would give the patient medications like maybe a angiotensin blocker, for example, or a, an ACE inhibitor. Those things are going to be working on keeping angiotensin 1 from converting to angiotensin 2, and therefore we don't have the vasoconstriction and the sodium and water reabsorption that is occurring in the kidney. So, in that way, it's going to help to lower blood pressure. Well, thank you for joining me for the renin angiotensin and aldosterone system. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please subscribe to our channel. And thank you for joining me again. Until next time, bye now.